people look at sports or players in in football league or hockey league as just objects. They're entertainers. So if they get injured and it's affecting your fantasy team, you're upset at that at that player, right? And you'll go online and you'll tweet something like, "Stop faking it, get up, and need some points," yeah. right? Um, that's not something that you would actually say to the person. Morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well. This week we are reviewing Walter Isaacson, uh, Isaacson's book, <laughs> Benjamin Franklin. A um, bit more about life. what's that? And specify that it's an American life because it's, it's an American life. Him, yeah. Benjamin Franklin is an interesting character. Um, he was uh, born in. 1706 uh, on January 17th. That's tomorrow. So Happy birthday, Mr. Mr. Frankie. He would be 315 years old tomorrow. 14. 14? That's what I wrote. Unless my math is bad. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> anyway, tomorrow. That's is awesome. Birthday. <laughs> um, with only two years of schooling, uh, Benjamin was considered at the time one of the world's greatest diplomats, scientists, inventor, and writer. Um, he also helped draft the Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution, which are still in effect today. Uh, just a remarkable life, for sure. So. We read a third of the book, and this will be a three-part series, but today there's a few topics that we wanted to cover. Number one was the 13 virtues for um, moral perfection. Um, number two was Benjamin's thoughts on the liberty of the free press. And number three was Benjam Benjamin's laid-back style at negotiation and how to gain other people's favors. Mm -hmm. So let's jump right into it, gentlemen. Uh, let's start off by Benjamin's uh, 13 virtues for moral perfection. So, so his goal with these 13 virtues was to attain uh, perfection, uh, moral perfection, right? Yes. And he does explain with his junto that he started, a group of uh, accountability partners, if you will. Let's discuss of, like, what, what a junto is, because I don't yeah. think that you know the people listening in necessarily understand what that is. Yeah. I, I, I see it as the world's first BNI group. I think that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Because yeah. before there were gentlemen's clubs. Yeah. But that was just like people with money and power just going in their club yeah. and uh, praising themselves. Yeah. But the junto was exactly it. A bunch of tradesmen that were there trying to help each other out. He wasn't born a rich man. I think it's probably a good time to clarify that. His father was a uh, soap maker. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Candle yeah. soap. Oil. He did something before that, the but the then youngest. when he... When he moved to, was it uh, Boston? He started a soap and candle business. Well, the way Walter describes it, he was the youngest of the youngest of the youngest for five generations. That's right. Right? Yeah. So, uh, so basically he had to fend for himself for the most part. He was in school and then they took him out of school. They put him in a different school. He did have two younger sisters. No, so the, the, the father boy. of Benjamin was that, but Benjamin wasn't the youngest. Benjamin wasn't the youngest? No. <laughs> no, it was youngest younger son. son. Youngest son. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the youngest son of the youngest son of the youngest son. Yeah. The yeah. Next, yeah. five but, generations. Yeah. yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So Benjamin was the youngest son. And youngest son. Okay. Not child. Not the youngest child. Okay. But that, but that makes a big difference then. Like if we have if you have two kids, it doesn't matter if you're the first or second one. But when you have 14 and you're the last one, yeah. it's a lot different. Yeah. On average, they had eight in the 1700s is what they say. Yeah. A lot of kids. A lot of babies. Yeah. So he started this group of uh, leather aprons, you know, um, middle class gentlemen who work different trades mm. to have weekly meetings to discuss ideas and educate themselves, read books. And uh, yeah, so he would try to practice uh, morality or um, to... to uh, well, how do you say that? To, to be a moral person? Yeah, to be a moral person, but to, act, to, to also reach um, perfection in his morality. Yeah. So he would practice these 13 uh, rules, sort of like uh, Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules to Life. That's, that's funny, eh? Yeah, yeah. As a lot of... Uh, do we have a few of them uh, written out that maybe you could rhyme off? I, do, I did pull them up here. You did? Yeah, perfect. So Walter Isaacson did point out that he didn't live a perfect life. Mm -hmm. You know, he struggled... Um, even with his own rules. Yeah. You know, so, he, he, but so, very aware of yeah. what he was doing, especially yeah. when running his newspaper. Correct. So number one is temperance. Eat not to dullness, drink not to elevation. What does that mean? I guess... So 
Don't eat too much. Don't drink too much. Exactly. Okay. Don't overindulge. Yes. Yeah. Don't overindulge. Um, which is, you know, eat in moderation. Good, uh, good rules. Drink in moderation. Everything in moderation. You think it was also based on, on uh, like the Bible, like gluttony or something? Or is it gluttony? Was alcohol illegal at the time? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it was illegal. It was. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. They ruled, they, at one point, they made, illi- they made it illegal to sell rum to the Indians. Yeah. But, uh, but like, was he it, mentioned it in the book. <laughs> was it he illegal? does mention the book. Wasn't, yeah. like, <laughs> wasn't it, like, acceptable and then illegal and then finally acceptable again? <clears throat> yeah, that's I think exactly it was it yeah. banned, like, in the early, and the late 1800s. Because mm-hmm. then it's, like, in the ni- but, 1920s. But this is 1700s, <laughs> that it, man. This guy's... So, yeah, it's way, way before that. <laughs> um, the next one is silence. The scene he describes of, like, what hell on earth would look like. Like, drunken people in the streets just burning stuff. Yeah. Pretty crazy. This is actually a really good one. Uh, speak not but what may benefit others or yourself. Avoid trifling conversation. Yeah. Basically, just if you have nothing good to say, don't say anything at all. Yes. You know? They're all good rules. Yeah. Very Which difficult. Which one is Jordan Peterson's that sounds very similar to this one? I just think that, that Jordan Peterson's took a lot of his stuff and added to like yeah. his 13. Very similar. He was probably one of the first self help people, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Benjamin Franklin. With his but he testing create, it, testing everything out. Yeah, well, and like and he basically created a networking group. Well, yeah, like he wasn't educated. Like things. just for me, this here is just crazy. The, he educated himself by borrowing books uh, that he would borrow after work, but had to bring them back before work. So he just educate himself during the night yeah. while he wasn't working. Like he was 12 years old and he was reading books on the progress of humanity. What the hell? <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> like, what did they know about the progress of humanity at the time? Well, he mentions a few quotes in there, and it make, it actually made some sense. Yeah. It's just, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, what's the next one? He studies philosophers, right, yeah. from ancient uh, Rome and, and Greek, and I found that surprising because just get access to that knowledge back in those days yeah. was just around the time the printing press was invented. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, if you're reading a book, it's because somebody had either written it from scratch or copied it by hand, Right. you know? So it must have been, books must have been super valuable back then. He was a printer. He ended up being point. a printer, yeah. What does that mean? Like, what is a printer um, in the 1700s? Just like a printer today, right? You print books, but the process was a lot different. Well, you it was somebody that was actually like, so yeah, you're putting... Printing uh, press. You're putting like the letters and all together, and then you're... That's how it worked. Yeah, what he actually he went to England to buy font. Invented his own. Yeah. For the Franklin Gothic. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually cool. <laughs> wow. Like What's the next one? Order. Order. Let all... Your things have their place. Let each part of your business have its time. Clean your room. Yeah, make your bed. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, Resolution. That's number four. Resolve to perform what you out or what you ought. O-U-G-H-T. Sorry, I'm... uh, Whatever you decide on doing, make sure you carry through. Perform without fall what you resolve. Um, We're going to all this. Five frugality make no expense but to do good to others or yourself favorite word of the book waste nothing frugal every time is a lot word. So every second times, page yeah. yeah industry lose no time be always employed in something useful cut off all unnecessary actions i like that yeah um sincerity use no hurtful deceit think innocently and justify and if you speak speak accordingly Justice, wrong no one, sorry, wrong none by doing injuries or omitting the benefits that are you are your duty. Let me read that again. Wrong none by doing injuries or omitting the benefits that are your duty. Hmm. Number nine is moderation. Avoid extremes. Forbear resenting injuries so much as you think they deserve. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well keep going. <laughs> it's funny how all these apply today. Yeah. Um, cleanli- cleanliness. Tolerate no unclean uncleanness <laughs> in body, clothes, or habitation. Look good. Feel good. Yeah. Tranquility. Be not disturbed 
Ah, uh, truffles. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Should have stopped at four. Uh, just run through them. <laughs> you, you interrupt him at eleven. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Should we keep going? Yeah, of course. You got the giggles. Sorry. You're at the end. <laughs> um, okay, so tranquility be not disturbed at truffles, or at accidents, common or unavoidable. Um, this reminds me of you know it's not it's not what happens to you it's how how you react to what happens to you. Yeah. Um, chastity rarely use venerary but for health or off, offspring never to dullness weakness or the injury of your own or another's peace or reputation yeah so I guess just don't use people for yeah you know whatever reason yeah all of those apply yeah. today and then finally it's the last crazy. one is humility Imi imitate Jews sorry imitate Jesus and not Socrates so humility uh, he didn't have it in there at first eh? not oh, sure if you remember that so he had a, he had 12 he gave it to one of his partners to read and then his partner said you should add humility in there oh yeah and then he mentioned yeah that's true because i don't have humility so it's something like he and he mentioned like this is the one that he's struggling the most like he's he's doing stuff and he's saying it's for the benefit of others but he mentions that it's also benefiting benefiting me as well and i'm enjoying the fact that people like me or praise me because of it so it's tough to be humble about yeah. it yeah. it's nice to make fun of yourself once in a while of course self-deprecating humor yeah. he was good at that. is like a thing that's it makes endearing. people like you a little bit more of course yeah okay well let's move on to the second topic which was benjamin's thoughts on the free press so i've got a little section of the book here that i highlighted and i'll read it out loud what page guys. is it it's on page 66 bottom uh two bottom paragraphs even as he became more political franklin resisted making his newspaper fiercely partisan uh the there would be very little printed, he noted, if publishers produced only things that offended nobody. So, Benjamin resisted taking sides on his newspaper, right? Uh, whether that be you know, on the left side or the right side. So, my question to you guys is, do you guys th think that that still applies to today's media? Newspapers, news, uh, radio television not at all no like i'd say maybe 20 percent of it is this way yeah if that worse today with uh <clears throat> social media if you're not happy with what you're seeing what you're hearing you just delete you know we're in a uh, constant state of deleting or, or pushing out stuff yeah. we don't necessarily believe in which yeah. then leaves you with everything that you agree with mm -hmm. so there's no freedom of, of uh, there is freedom of speech but there's no mix of it so it's everything you want to hear I think there's too much freedom of speech hmm. right now I think because people are expressing their opinions behind um, behind a keyboard yeah right and a lot of these people won't express those opinions face to face true right so, like especially like let's just talk about sports for example okay um people look at sports or players in in football league or hockey league as just objects they're entertainers so if they get injured and it's affecting your fantasy team you're upset at that at that player right and you'll go online and you'll tweet something like stop faking it get up and need some points yeah. right um that's not something that you would actually say to the person that's not something you would say out loud when face you're with people because it's it, it's a good it point and that's how a lot of rallies on extremists start as well so it is uh, because you're hidden between um, behind your keyboard it's it's a lot easier to say hurtful stuff and yeah. things like that but i think we have to be careful when we mention there's too much freedom of uh of expression um, I if we can't express what we think um, we're not going to be able to have some rallies we're not going to be able to have changes in society um, whether you're to right or to left it, if you're stuck in a mold we're stuck with saying uh, if you can't say what you think you're stuck in thinking what the press tells you and the government tells you so if those two are bad for whatever reason, mm. we elect the wrong people and we have the press at the wrong spot, we can't object to it if yeah. we don't have freedom of expression. I don't think it's a bad thing to have too much freedom of speech. I'm just saying I think a lot of we do have freedom of speech. There's a cost to having freedom of speech. 
but uh, well, what you read on Facebook, it's a random, a random people that are talking on Facebook about this, uh-huh. about anything, absolutely anything, mm-hmm. right? They're expressing their opinion about absolutely anything. Some people make fake accounts with fake pictures to express a racist opinion. So things here's are, things are changing though. There is, like I said, the cancel culture. Like if if you go too far, you're gonna get canceled out. Like what's the Jones names there? So yeah, let's let's talk about that yeah. particular subject. But there is a limit to what you can do or say that. The people that do have the loudest speaker today, we'll talk about Facebook, Twitter, you know, Instagram, YouTube. and YouTube. Do you think that they should be allowed to cancel certain voices because they're too radical? Like Ben Shapiro? Like Ben Shapiro, like Alex Jones, Alex Jones yeah. um, like Milo Yiannopoulos. Mm. That, uh, like if, if you don't European want to listen guy, to these guys, you just you uh, tune them out. Tune them out, exactly. But, but that's you should be able to like cancel them. Like Alex Jones was kicked out of YouTube, right? Yeah. Any other platform? So you th- just, just follow. Uh, so Chris, what you're them. saying is he shouldn't get kicked out? No, no. If you don't want to listen to him, don't listen to don't him. Don't subscribe you know? to his channel. Exactly. If there's right. a warning before the show you watch, mm-hmm. and you keep watching, it's your own damn fault, in my yeah. opinion. I just leave it there. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, what's the difference between that and Donald Trump? Religious, no, but the, but the and religious, religious videos on YouTube that are trying to convince you to be a Christian or a Muslim or a Jew or whatever. The, like, the problem with that too is that it's based, the cancellation of an account is based on the the opinion of what is right from one person at the top. Mm-hmm. What if this person is wrong? What if this We're person is too right wing or too left wing? Well, yeah. I think, I think you just said it because it just shows um, what Facebook believes in or what YouTube believes in when it Absolutely. should be mm-hmm. neutral. And that's the problem. It's not neutral anymore. I think people Clearly. just believe in liberal stuff at the end of the day because yeah. liberal is almost the two is is, is nice. It's kindness. It's kindness. You're not going to get accepting. in trouble with liberal views. Exactly. Yeah. You're not right. If you just accept everybody in anything, regardless of the political impact and economical impact, you're fine. So I'm torn on the issue because on one side I'm definitely for not being banned mm-hmm. i'm i don't believe that anybody should be taken away their ability to speak i think that everybody should have the right to say whatever they want to say but on the flip side i'm thinking about the owners of youtube the owner of facebook yeah they have the right to do whatever they want it's yeah. their business it's their platform it's their platform so but they also have a responsibility to the public. They have three billion users. But they have a responsibility when do they become to too big to be that? You're too big. You need to well, act by different yeah. rules, right? Yeah. If I don't want to deal with a specific client because I just don't like him, I don't have to, right? Um, but if is that it goes the same? public, everybody's going to hate you. Okay. Depends oh, on what the yeah. reason is. Right. If the guy's an asshole... Then yeah, it's I, no big I, deal. I went on record more than once saying that I fired some clients because they were energy suckers. Yeah, like it, it is what it is. If you're a jerk to me, why would I deal with you? Why would I? I don't, need, I don't need you. Right. Yeah, go to hell. Like I mean, there's just nothing that I that forces me to deal with you. But I'm talking if I'm not saying this is you at all. You're, you're the last Sorry. person that would do this. But if you're gonna stop dealing with somebody because they're bald, like you don't want to deal with Jeremy. If you don't if you don't deal with you know yeah and this and then Jeremy goes on Facebook and says oh my god you know asshole yeah that guy that asshole didn't want to deal with me because I don't look to his standards man that's gonna kill you you're the one that just called him bald <laughs> well, I'm joking. <laughs> um, um, like, so I think they Benjamin- have a responsibility. I think. Sorry, Marty. They, what I was trying to say is they do have a responsibility. Facebook has a responsibility to to control or try to control the content. Because if you are um, displaying some hate speech, if you're creating a Facebook group to attack someone, that's wrong. Mm-hmm. Like you know the Luca Magnota thing. They created a Facebook group to catch this guy. And this guy posted a video. I think I'm not sure if he posted it on YouTube, but he posted a video on the internet about him killing someone. Yeah, but that's that's more than freedom of speech, though. That's that, that's too up, far. Man. That's too far. But a political view, or a religious view, or whatever view you've got, it I think people have the right it, yeah. to express it as long as you're not delivering any hate speech. It's mm-hmm. true, right? If you're not, if you're not, um, you know, if you're not 
trying to rally up a bunch of people to commit genocide. Well, and, well, like, and that's it. How, right? how do you think ISIS got all their following? Yeah. It's online. But they, how do you catch that, man? What's that? How do you catch that? Well, you have to. It's, it's the same thing as, like, for example, YouTube, that if you swear throughout your, uh, your episode, you're likely not going to appear on the top pages. You're not going to appear in the searches of people. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they control a lot of stuff. So they have people controlling that. No, it's al- algorithms. Yeah, yeah it's algorithms. Yeah. Okay. So like, if you're if you're probably they have algorithms that says that they, they just see people, you know, beheading people in the video. Well, then bang, it won't appear, or not as much. So that's how you control stuff like that. There's so much cool stuff on the internet. <laughs> yes, there is. That's right. But I think he had it right, and you know, he lived in Philadelphia, which was a town of twelve thousand people back then when he came up with this stuff we obviously live in a very different world Mm -hmm. but i think he had it right when he said that there would be very little printed he noted if public publishers produce only things that offended a nobody and i think a lot of big corporations that are in social media would benefit from just throwing this up on their head office wall you know and being like sorry sorry you're offended but you know, I think Benjamin got it right 315 years ago when he said that, suck it up. I mean, we're going to hear both sides um, and then the public will decide what's good. You know, that's democracy at the end of the day. Yeah. But there's a lot of news, you know, a lot of news channel. Well, news the problem too is you're you, if either you, left or right, you know. But I think CNN and Fox and those guys will probably continue to lose viewership slowly but surely they're just not as relevant because they're like going after those hardcore you know left or right left or right views and it's like it's like their dying stand you know that's the way i see it i like the economist to be honest i don't know what that is the economist is a magazine you can subscribe to it's very unbiased i find it sometimes a little too left but um it's very moderate right um and it's a good it's always a good read it's always good journalists good it's authors well research research yeah. articles very yeah. well researched yeah. articles right i so just I, like I, the truth well like, that's it and most and of the time it know. is the truth like every article i've read especially on like donald trump they will say the benefits and then they will say the negatives yeah that's good you know so it's like uh, they're not picking sides but one but some honestly with with somebody like donald trump it's hard to root for the guy no matter where As a you person. are, yeah, it's hard to root for the guy. Like I, you know, I really hated it. Well, let's talk about Canadian politics, right? When um, Justin Tr- uh, Trudeau came out with his uh, brown face, um, Andrew Scheer was running for you know prime minister, and a few days before those videos came out, he defended one of his uh, members of parliament, saying that oh you know he was younger, he didn't know what he was doing. Right. I don't think we should we should look in the past and judge people for their actions. Of before. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then path that comes out, and then he's like, "Oh, what a, what a douche!" You know. Yeah, of course. <laughs> what an idiot. Well, yeah, it's politics. And it's like stuff like that is not endearing. That no. that makes you lose so yeah. much. But there's a lot of things that Trudeau have done. Um, like maybe not a lot of things. Like for example, when he was when he was somebody read somebody like that video that him, him talking about another another uh, politician in that Trump. video about Trump yeah. yeah listen man these things happen in politics yeah. and these things happen in the business world these things happen there's gossip all the time the, the only thing about that are video built on gossip is you're you're in a room and you know you're being filmed like that was the purpose of that little cocktail party. Yeah, it's just all the all the world leaders were in there, and the press was just taking videos. Well, you can like, be smarter than that, but these things happen. Yeah. People need to understand that these things happen. People yeah. make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Mm-hmm. If somebody comes out perfect, he hasn't lived. And Benjamin is not perfect. Not no, at all. and that's why he was loved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My just my uh, just one last thing on that. So th- for me, the big problem about. Um, me, news media right now is you're really like we said either left or right and you can't be middle and like let's just say the the extremist right is um, frugal more um, economy biased and against abortion than rights mm. right but so if I'm coming on and talking about the fact that I want a balanced budget I'm against abortions automatically mm-hmm. 
why it's so not the case but that but that's like you guys know me that's not the case yeah. but like it's just or if i'm left and i'm i'm uh pro uh pro like choice or stuff like that then i'm against a balanced budget because right. i have to choose one side i think mm. we we can draw um knowledge from a previous book that we read in sapiens you know as human beings we want to put people in either us or them exactly you yeah. know it's easier for us to organize other people in group a or b so you you saying that hey i don't like uh this this spending that's going on um i think we should be more conservative with our money what you're uh, you're you're against abortion yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. Whoa, whoa i didn't say that <laughs> like i mean two, there's two different issues two, li- two elections passed i was uh talking i had this conversation and i'm like well you know the the uh, the ontario the last ontario election i'm like well we need to start balancing budget i didn't talk about liberals i didn't talk, talk about conservatives or ndp i talked about none of that but then it was all oh well then you're against the environment Hmm. How does that come into play? Yeah, it's all about balance. Uh, yeah, that's that, the thing. Like, it's, want to be one does not mean the other. Like, it's just yeah. stop being left or right. Let's just do the right thing. Yeah, right. How? Why not try to get all of it, all the right, right things? Yeah. So anyway, there you sh- take a little bit from both sides and apply it to your own life, and that should be the middle. You know, mm. a little bit of everything. I think the vast majority of people are in the middle. Yeah, exactly. It's just, just easier for us to right say, right. "Oh, that guy's blue or red," or you yeah. know, it's. What color do you get when you mix blue and red? <laughs> mauve. Uh, mauve. Mauve. Purple. Sorry. Yeah, but purple's, <laughs> mauve. purple's like it's more nice blue. Mauve. Hey? Purple's like more. If you put, if you put purple, people are going to think you're blue. True. You know? Okay. I mean, fuchsia. <laughs> fuchsia. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, let's move on to uh, our third topic for today. We're doing good on time. Um we also wanted to talk about Benjamin's laid back style on negotiations and how he went about to gain other people's favors. So one of his, you know, best attributes is that he was good with people and it allowed him to be one of the, the world's best ambassadors. You know, later on in the book, I'm sure we'll learn about how he gained France's um, favor to help them with the revolution that we'll probably mm. talk about in this book I guess. yeah it has yes. to. Yeah. so let's talk about his uh, negotiation styles well it was it, it was a bit of the same as the uh when he was talking about the press he would try not to take a side and he was he would try not to be argumentative and confrontational because he wanted people uh he didn't want people on their guard Right. He wanted people to, he just wanted to have a conversation and slowly put his opinion in there. And then this person without realizing it would do concessions. So like he'd ask indirect questions. He'd be uh, just about, so he'd let you express your opinion, then would ask uh, questions on it. So he'd start elaborating and then slowly but surely he just push you a little bit off your topic and then get you to admit some of the stuff that uh, aren't black and white. So he'd yeah. get you, he'd get you on his side. Yeah. If you let somebody speak long enough, they'll tell you the truth. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. How many, how many times have we heard like when you negotiate, shut up? Ask questions. Shut up. Let them keep going. Yeah. I use I use this all all the time. Yeah. Like his. Just to sum up everything, he said the older uh, so the older he got, he used silence wisely, employed indirect uh, indirect style of persuasion, and feigned modesty and naivete in disputes. Just meaning like he he wasn't too sure what was going on, but like he he just it was a it was a big game for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I also like how if he had an idea, he would give that idea to someone else and compliment that other person or one of his friends on the the new idea. And then jealousy would not be a factor. Mm -hmm. And then that new idea would be, you know, um, well received compared to him just throwing out an idea of his out there. Well, think about that person. Like if I uh, if you have a good idea, you talk you talk about it to me. I yeah. start talking about it, and then you praise me on it. Yeah. I know that you came up with the idea. Yeah. I am like, man, I like this guy. He's not <laughs> taking the credit for everything, yeah, right? Yeah. And that was his whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he knows, man. He knows how to work the room, right? To be humble. Mm-hmm. And this is all Brilliant. stuff that he learned and tested in the junto. Mm-hmm. You know, he would often be uh, the guinea pig for his own uh, thoughts or own um, experiments. 
There's a lot of things we can talk about that he did. I know we don't have a lot of time, but like his experiments with lightning and how he saved a lot of churches from burning down and praised and being a hero in France and like there was a, like one year in Britain there was 133 death. Yeah. Because of lightning. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And then he saved all of these afterwards. Yeah. So let's talk about that, you know, his scientific um, curiosity. curiosity and the inventions. So you guys um, learned about the stove that he created. Yeah. Didn't really work out in the end. <laughs> Most people, you know, sort of it modified it, yeah. modified it once they had bought the Franklin stove. But one thing that he did invent was the lightning rod. And um, everybody thought that lightning wasn't really electricity. They thought it was storm fire. What do they yeah. call it? Some, uh, well, they thought it, it came from God too. Yeah, yeah. Like it's <laughs> just, and like some when he came up with that, like it, the preachers were like, uh, "You're playing with uh, your uh, uh, blasphemy." So, yeah, blasphemy from whatever the, the the gods were trying to do. And then he's yeah. like, the, the, you, "You can't protect yourself from God like that." And his answer was, "Well, technically, the rain comes from God as well, and we all have roofs over our head." Mm-hmm. Why not protect ourselves against this one too? Yeah. So the, we all have a version of a lightning rod in our houses here in Ontario because, you know, all our houses are grounded. You got a, a water main. You got the copper that's connected to it, to the plumbing mm -hmm. of the house. Those are lightning rods. Yeah. And like Cedric said, if we didn't have that, there'd be a shit ton of deaths, you know. I had no idea. Just by, you know, houses being struck by lightning. So can you explain that again? How it works? Yeah. How the so lightning if lightning is ever to hit your house then it would go directly to the ground versus blowing your roof up. Okay. Have you ever seen a lightning hit a tree in a video? Yeah. What happens to the tree? Well, it's, it splits. Explodes. Yeah. Explodes. Yeah. yeah. Catches on fire. So if that happens to your house, it's grounded through the plumbing, uh, a lot of copper, and then it goes all the way down to your water main, so it discharges into the ground with no, no harm. So what the lightning rod did is you, they put it at the top of the building, so the lightning rod will the lightning will hit it, and then go all the the energy will go straight in the ground. A path of least resistance. Yeah. So it's connected to the ground. Mm. Yeah. And what he realized is that lightning is created when you have the low and high pressure that hits something in the sky. So like when they connect, and then when the, like the kite experiment is like like when these pressures hit the kite, then lightning happens. Uh, because it was like a positive and negative mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so that's how we created the, the, the kite experiment but then the lightning rod is the same thing so when it hits electricity happens and then straight into the ground yeah, I remember so for the kite experiment he did send out a letter to france and britain explaining his experiment and what he wanted to do even before performing it and he did not take credit for doing it first and it's debatable in the book whether he did it first or not, but he didn't want to take credit for it. Uh, some say it's because he didn't want to be the one who scrapped the experiment or want, didn't want to uh, perform it without, uh, or being ridiculed, right? Um, but that's that's like another, another sign of him just pushing the um the credit On to somebody someone else. else that was that, an easy an else. easy one to push though because they used they did it before him but they used his theory yeah so by giving them credit he was also taking it at the same time and a few days later then he came out and said well yeah I and he still and he still mentioned that i did it right after them but just not yeah. uh uh but i didn't know they did it so technically the way he was saying it is i'm in Nobody told me to do it. I still did it on my own first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't you guys find it hilarious that most pictures that we see about Benjamin and his son uh, on the kite experiment is of an old man with a young boy, but in reality, he was only like 45 when he did the experiment mm -hmm. and his son was like 21. Wouldn't you be pissed <laughs> if you did like a cool <laughs> experiment with your dad and then for the next 300 years you're depicted as a as a young boy versus, the, you know. A, I kind of want to hang out with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, he does say that at the beginning of the book that um, he's uh, a character that you can picture, you can picture him today with us. And when you're reading this book, you're like, yeah, I, I can totally see that. Like I would love to go for a beer with him. Yeah. And pick his brain. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. But he mentioned too, like uh, George Washington at the time, like if you, people would be scared to just touch him on the shoulder to talk to him because he could snap. Like, He's a soldier. Yeah, the guy was just nuts. But Benjamin was the opposite. 
Like you could just ask him something he'd want to learn from you, even though he doesn't know you. Like it's total opposite. Like you'd want to have a beer with this guy. I think he was more like, what's his, uh, um, Pierre Trudeau. Yeah. Okay. Um, he was, uh, apparently like he would go to like random bars without any bodyguards and he would just hang out with the regular people. Like that guy was a stud, man. A man of the people. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And, um, I, I, for some reason, I know he wasn't the president. I got it. But for some reason, that's still sticking in my head. I know. But he did remind me a little bit of Pierre. From yeah, some, what I know about Pierre Trudeau. Some people, because I did, um, after I read the book, I went online. I, I listened to a few short documentaries. And a lot of people have the opinion that he's the most important of the founding fathers of the, of the United States. You know? he, he brought them together. Yeah. More than anybody else. And uh, yeah, he's, uh, right here at the beginning of the book, he says that, you know, America is what it is today because Benjamin Franklin thought about the middle class, you yeah. know, the people mm -hmm. that... He would hang out with the middle class. Yeah. Which is why he started his own college, to teach middle class math, Crazy. writing, reading. It's what we know of schools today, right? Before that, it was based on learning religion and, mm. and stuff like that. Like, that's probably why he didn't go to Harvard. So... Yeah. Crazy. And that's how he realized that blacks were just as smart. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, yeah. he was biased because of what he was told. And then he had black kids in there. And they're like, oh, they're leaning, le learning just as fast. They have the same reactions. They're the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah. It's crazy. They, they took something like that. They were so separated. That so it was like his ultimate goal is just to move forward, to push things yeah. forward. And it doesn't matter who takes the credit. Let's just get this thing done, right? I think I like the world would look totally different if he, he, wasn't, there. he wasn't born you know yeah 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 there is a question in the book um would things be different for him or would he have conducted himself differently if he did go to harvard and just being pushed into being a religious man and that only um by not going there he educated himself and then became who he is today so do you, you guys think he'd be totally different if he went to Harvard or would he still be as curious? I and, think that and small things can change a person's life drastically. Yeah. Yeah. So something as big as going to, you know, Harvard yeah. would have changed his life dramatically. They probably would have shut down his, his crazy ideas. And yeah. I think the fact that he's self-educated is big. I think self-education is extremely important. Look at all the big guy, the big, like, you know, Steve Jobs, he's practically self-educated yeah. you know um, Elon Musk he is yes he went to Queens he went to big universities but this guy at the age of like 10 11 12 have you read that book yet yeah uh, did we Musk, read it not yet no. okay well he basically he learned he taught himself everything he you taught know? himself to code like yeah. he created at 12 Elon Musk created the the uh, Atari game or I'm not sure exactly what the console was but he created the game and sold it for like 20,000 yeah. <laughs> that's crazy it was like 12 at the end of the day like he's self-educated and Ben is self-educated I, I feel like a lot of um, even the ones that did go to university and, and at Ivy League schools regardless of what they learned they still taught themselves at the end right that just shows how that just shows how curious he is and how much he wants to learn how much of a just how much more advanced he was driven person yeah yeah all Especially right in so uh we do have a bit of a crowd here today Sylvain, rj you mic'd up i think so yeah is he good yeah we can hear him cool thanks for joining us boys do you have anything else to add RJ, Sylvain? Uh, no, that was, that was a good ending to it. The, the thing about Harvard, where what would happen if he actually did go to Harvard, I think is the, like, the big question, because I know they mentioned like the first like, few pages of the book. Yeah. And then you think about it through the, while you're reading the book, if he did go to Harvard, how things could have changed. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think it would probably be more um, of an elite like a, yeah. In, if he had the resources, you never know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would have favored. Well, they mentioned the into it. He was at the top of his class, so he would have he would have been able to get scholarships anywhere and just keep going for free. So it wasn't the money thing mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. He was smart enough. Yeah, I think it would have changed his life drastically. They they mentioned into it though that um, they think that because he was such a rebel and uh, rebellious and curious person in his nature, uh, he would have still be able to come out of there and do his yeah. own thing a little bit I think so too yeah like it was so out there like it's, yeah. it was a very strong personality leaning this way yeah I think even if he would have went to Harvard I don't 
I think he would have still been uh, as powerful and as influential so. as he was. Yeah, but maybe like in a totally different way. You know? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty much inevitable for him to become who who we know. Maybe his ideas on the free press would have been, hey, you can print whatever you want just as long as it favors all my buddies from Harvard. Mm, for to, sure. To, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. The, the, and yeah. to go back to your initial question about the press today, do you think, well, I'm... I think that it's still the way it's happening, but how um, Benjamin Franklin was writing stories and then replying to his stories with fictitious characters. He would invent, and he would often write as a as a woman's perspective. And so, how often do you think that still happens today, where some media, you know, just posting news and then just replying to that news with fake people? Well, I think fake news. There's like some, <laughs> Donald there's Trump some people say. that that are saying that that's how Russia influenced the U.S. election is they created false controversies. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, they would hold like um, they would create a Facebook group, have a rally for LGBT causes, and then they would form a, a group of extremist right Nazis, and then they would hold an event right across the street from you know the lgbt uh, <laughs> event so then they would automatically create controversy and then boom so yeah, yeah it definitely happens today they're mm-hmm. called trolls and benjamin franklin is the original troll <laughs> he was a troll like <laughs> faking like the competitor's death like i mean oh, that's yeah. crazy like is that the, 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 the com- almanac the uh poor, poor richard's, richard's almanac. yeah poor richard's yeah. almanac yeah Mm. <laughs> it's just, wow. he must be dead or he wouldn't write something like that like, yeah. yeah so I don't know if it was something that was happening before his time but it's crazy to think that you know he created fictional people mm-hmm. cool anything else to add for today gentlemen loving it so far looking forward to the next uh, okay 200 pages yeah so let's uh, let's give our readers uh, an idea of until when we'll read so we've got, uh, what, 580 pages in this book? Not that much, just because the end is like a uh, chronology okay. at 502. So it's there's about 500 pages, yeah. So if we read till page 350, that'll be good? Is it the end of the chapter? Well, I just want to see those pictures. Yeah, okay, so we see the pictures if we read up to 350, yeah? So we'll read until chapter 14. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, about 350. Yep. So chapter 8 through 14, well, through 13, we stop at the beginning of chapter 14. Sounds good. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for joining us. As always, if you do like the content, please like, leave us your comments below. We really like reading those. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell. We'll see you next time.